Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we have a pair of healing stories in our scriptures. The ten lepers that I just read about and Naaman from the second king's story. They all are in need of healing from their leprosy. and They are stuck without a cure on their own. The lives that they knew were gone, and their hope for healing, when we begin the story anyway, is yet unfulfilled. These stories take place in that neither here nor there place, that unsettled, unresolved time in their lives. Now we, of course, know how the stories turn out for the ten lepers and for Naaman, don't we? You and I and people have faith, of faith have the word of God. And it tells us that everything is going to be all right for these people. But think about the characters in the story. For them, they don't know what the future holds for them. And so it makes it all the more important for us to re-examine these stories. Because think about it this way. In one way or another, you and I are in the middle of our stories. And we don't know how our stories are going to turn out. Whether it's with our personal lives, in our relationship with our families, even in our careers, we might be in one of those in-between places, wondering what's going to happen next. These stories remind me of some lyrics from my favorite band, Story Hill. I quote them all the time because they speak so well to so many of life's situations. They have a classic song, uh, about these neither here nor there moments. It's called Somewhere in Between. And the song starts like this. They sing, I was sleeping. I don't know if we're in Iowa or Missouri. It's one of those dreams caught between the clearing and the blurry. And I'm not awake, but I'm not <coughs> sleeping. I'm somewhere in between. Let us remember, friends, that is in these in-between moments, in these unknown and uncertain places, that the Spirit of God likes to play, likes to be busy in the world and in our lives. First, let's look at Naaman. Naaman was an important man, wasn't he? A commander of the army of Aram. He was in great favor with the king. He was a warrior. I think he expected in his life that he would be treated with honor, with respect by whomever he encountered, wherever he went. He had this belief that his personal status should translate favorably to everyone else's life when they thought about him. But this healing that happens for Naaman, well, it doesn't come directly to him, does it? In fact, it comes through a messenger, not even Elisha himself. Naaman expected this prophet to come out and to honor him in his need. He said he should come out to me and wave his hands around, right, and call down God's favor and make a big spectacle out of it because I'm important, Naaman was saying. Instead, he's left on the doorstep wondering about his own worth. Naaman is somewhere in between. Maybe you and I have faced these kind of issues in our own lives, right? Just because in one part of our lives, maybe we have a certain job or a certain position somewhere where we are respected, where we are honored, we think, well, that should translate to everything in my life. Everywhere I go, people should treat me with respect. People should treat me with honor. I certainly deserve more than this. I find myself saying that. I think you do as well at certain times, right? Or you say, I'm better than this. Why don't people know that about me? We want our worth to be universally recognized, don't we? We want it to be rewarded. But as this name and story shows us, and as many of the stories in the Bible show us, when we're in need of help, when we think we deserve something, or even if we just hope for something beyond reason, God's work comes in ways unseen unknown, unexpected. It's in those places somewhere in between where God is at work. Not where we think it should be, but where God is at work. 
The same kind of unseen, unexpected healing happens for the lepers, doesn't it, in today's gospel reading. They're crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They're expecting a cure. We're in the 17th chapter of Luke by this point. People know who Jesus is, right? He's a healer. The lepers know it. He has given the blind their sight. He has cast out demons. These lepers know who Jesus is. Heck, Jesus calms the wind and the waves, right? He's pretty famous at this point. And so those ten lepers, when they see him coming, they know who he is, and they expect something for themselves. They expect healing. And instead, they're sent away. I bet you they were used to that, being sent away for who they are. It's not what they had in mind, right? When Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priests, they think, what, no command from on high? No special touch? No fancy prayer raised to God? Didn't he once mix spit and dirt and help some guy? Can't he do that for us? These lepers are thinking. It didn't turn out the way that they expected it to turn out. Instead of being miraculously healed on the spot, delivered back into a life of fullness, maybe to the way it used to be for them before their leprosy, they're sent away. And seemingly, they are still infected by the disease. Those lepers are still stuck somewhere in between, in between who they were before leprosy and who they will be once they're healed. We have a fancy word for this in-between place in life. It's called liminal space. Liminal space is that moment of uncertainty before everything changes. You see this in stories. You see this in movies. You see this uh, all over the place in your own lives as well. Think of it this way. Liminal space is like this. You're about to go out on your first date with the person that you really like. Some of you are going to have to think back a little ways on that, huh? Up to this point, you've never been alone with this person. Maybe you've been in a group before, but you've never just been the two of you together. And you finally get a chance to go out to dinner, just the two of you. What kind of conversation are you going to have? Will this date lead to another date? Might it lead to some kind of a relationship? Might this date change the rest of your life? Or could it be that things aren't going to work out? Maybe the conversation's going to turn sour. Maybe it's not the right fit. Liminal space is that moment where you're standing on the doorstep with your hand raised to knock on the door, and you haven't knocked yet. You know this feeling, right? These liminal spaces where the unknown of the future could go anywhere. These spaces, friends, are where God's power is spiriting around, flowing around us, dancing about. That's where God is ready to do something with your life. Naaman was a foreigner, and he came to Israel to ask for help from God's prophet. The lepers were outcasts, they were stranded somewhere between Galilee and Samaria. If you remember the region between Galilee and Samaria, it's not quite a Gentile region, it's not quite a Jewish region. The Bible reminds us that Jews and Samaritans don't really get along all that well. And so Jesus, the Son of God, enters into this in-between space, that liminal space. Have you been in these times in your life where you're somewhere in between and that's when God has acted? Friends, I think this is where we are at United Lutheran Church of Proctor right now. We're somewhere in between. We're not the congregation that we used to be. Gone are the days of Bethlehem and Emmanuel. I will say I'm pleasantly surprised as your pastor that I don't hear a lot about that anymore. Two years in, nobody's saying, you know, pastor, Bethlehem used to do it this way. Or, well, back in Emmanuel, we used to. I don't hear that anymore. And that's a great thing. 
It really is. Our histories are history. They are who we were, but they are not who we are anymore. And yet, we're not to where we're going yet, are we? There's something different for the future of this congregation. We don't know what it's going to be. Maybe it's a new building. We've got plenty of money set aside for that eventuality. Is it going to be here? Is it going to be somewhere else? I don't know. Maybe it's not that at all. Maybe we take another turn and head in a new direction as a congregation. We are not there yet. We don't know what it's going to turn out for us at United. We're in that liminal space. We're somewhere in between. Remember at the beginning of my sermon, though, I mentioned that as people of faith, We have the word of God to look to, to help us trust, to help us believe, even when we're stuck in the middle. The truth for Naaman, the truth for the ten lepers, and the truth for us is that God is always at work in the unknown places, in the unseen places, in ways unexpected. God is at work. Even when we are in the midst of the unknown, when we are in these liminal spaces, As people of faith, we can believe that God is still working. Story Hill ends their great song with these lyrics. I was sleeping. I don't know if we're in Iowa or Missouri, but it doesn't matter. It all looks the same through the cornfields and the snow flurries. And I'm just passing through on the way to somewhere. The destination's distant, but I don't care. I haven't yet arrived, but I'm not just started. I'm somewhere in between. Friends, may we be confident enough to believe that even though we are somewhere in between, that it's okay. That God is faithful and just, compassionate and merciful. And God delights in these spaces in between and leads us forth into a future yet unknown. He leads us forth with grace. Amen.